today in this new episode of brain and spine surgery i want to present a case of a young person who came to us uh, two months back with severe pain in low back inability to stand or walk for nearly three to four months uh, he had tried various alternative medicines and treatments which had failed in fact his problem only worsened uh, when he came to us there was weakness in his feet which we call as partial foot drop uh, this is what happens when uh, the cases which are actually indicated of surgery uh, for indicated for surgery are treated conservatively so what we see here is the mri of this patient mri of the lumbar spine that is the uh, lowermost part of the spine and you can see this disc which is slipped that's why it is called a slip disc or herniated disc and uh, it is severely compressing on the nerves here the nerves are seen here uh, like uh, small black threads and they are severely compressed by this disc these nerves are destined to supply the buttock area the posterior thigh area the calf area and these nerves also supply power to the feet muscles uh, since this compression was there persistently and was increasing over the period of time he was unable to stand walk and uh, his feet started becoming weak uh, these nerves incidentally also supply the bladder so if this compression is left untreated these patients can develop uh, bladder retention they are not able to pass urine normally now i will show you the post operative x ray here we have removed the compressing disc and we have fixed this two vertebrae with the help of screws and rods so that there is a solid uh, backup for this level if we see here again the reason for fixation is that because of this disc prolapse the vertebral body has is also slipped behind it is called as retrolysthesis and that's why we have fixed his spine so that uh, he is able to move without any problem this is the disc which was removed and i am purposefully showing this in relation with the preoperative mri this is the big fragment which had entered into the spinal canal can you see this and this has been resected one more photo showing the same thing from slightly different angle this was a big fragment which was pressing and this is the photo of the fragment which had entered you can appreciate that it is almost two and a half to three centimeter big fragment right and uh, this had entered into a very small space of spinal canal and had compressed the uh, nerves of cauda equina that is the nerves which were uh, which supply the lower limbs and the bladder uh, there was a very severe compression now this is this has been removed successfully his spine has been fixed and now he is ready to join his uh, normal work and lead his normal life this is the video taken during his follow up visit and now he is able to walk properly his power of his feet is returned to normal and he has regained uh, confidence he said that he has started moving around his house and soon he will be able to uh, work even though his work is uh, a hard work he will be able to work now so it is very important to realize that uh, disc herniations or lumbar canal stenosis are uh, very very uh, notorious problems which can really push someone to the limit and though it is true that 90% of the spine problems do not require surgery when surgery is required avoiding that surgery because someone says that uh, there are dangers because someone says that surgery may not be required some people uh, you know create atmosphere around the validity of the surgery all these problems will create pro will create long term uh, deficiencies in these patients if they are not operated in time so this is something that we have to remember it is a very important part of neurosurgical practice to really differentiate the patients who actually need surgery 
and who may not need surgery and could be treated without surgery. This applies to all the areas in spine starting from the craniovertebral junctions, the various tumors occurring in craniovertebral junctions or cervical spine, various degrees and grades of myelopathy, thoracic spinal problems and lumbar spinal problems. So the aim of this series of brain and spine surgery is to educate public of what are the various types of problems that can come and how they need to be treated, how decisions are made and thus helping people to make right choices.